So this is uh, theming with uh, Drupal 8 and Foundation 6. Um, I'm Eric Huffman. Um, follow me on Twitter if you like. I might tweet out once a month if I'm feeling very chatty, maybe twice. Um, LinkedIn profile if you care, and I'm the Huffman on Drupal.org. Um, I work for a company called Media Current. Um, we're a full service digital agency specializing in helping large enterprise brands adopt Drupal. Um, we're based out of Atlanta, but, and that's where I'm from, is Atlanta. Um, well, actually, I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, so I'm actually a Midwesterner, but I've been living in the South for the past 20 years. So if you're expecting somebody to have a nice, thick Southern accent, sorry, I'm actually a, a Hoosier. Um, but we're a distributed team, so we're, we're across the entire United States, um, and we're up to over 60 folks now. And I think, um, I think we're actually hiring, so if you're interested in looking around for a job, please check out our site. Got some jobs posted there. So here's a brief uh, overview of what we're going to cover today. We're going to take a look at um, the newest version of the Zurb Foundation Framework, which is version six, um, and why it's um, why I, I feel it's um, um, a good combination to work with with Drupal 8. Um, we're going to look at how to use it with Drupal 8. We'll have a couple different approaches. One's just setting up a, a basic um, custom theme, nothing real special about it, just using the, the Com, uh, compiled CSS and JS straight out of the foundation site. The other one's more advanced theme where we're going to take advantage of some of the um, build tools and other things that Zurb has, has released with the version of Foundation 6. And then we'll also take a quick look at the um, Zurb Foundation contributed theme that's out there right now and its state um, for using it in Drupal 8. Um, so actually when I first talked about this topic, um, uh, what coworker um, named Chris Doherty presented it with me and he's a huge cinephile we always like to include some kind of movie reference in his, in his um, uh, presentation, so I suggested, anybody recognize this? Yeah. Which Cassie and Sundance Kid? So that was my recommendation since we're talking about a, you know, two, two uh, partners in crime working together. Um, and actually, I, this was one of the movies that he had not seen and I had seen, so I felt pretty, uh, pretty cool actually beating him in a, in a classic movie. <clears throat> um, so is anyone here actually using Foundation in any capacity, or, or any other framework, Bootstrap, use Bootstrap, and um, you know, it's, is it, are you actively using it, just occasionally using it, or is it like your go-to thing all the time? Is anybody like just a huge evangelist of anything? Well, many customers actually, or many clients, well, they want Bootstrap. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's the hotness that everyone wants. Right, right. <laughs> um, well, I do have a couple confessions to make. Um, I have actually not used Foundation 6 in any, any like production, you know, actual projects yet. Um, last time I used Foundation was Foundation 5, and that was almost a year ago. Um, and actually, when I was first introduced to Foundation, which was like 2012, um, I thought, you know, what is this bloated framework crap? Um, you know, I don't need no sneaking framework. I'm going to build my own uh, grid and all this other stuff. And but since then, I've kind of, I guess, come to my senses somewhat. Um, so before we dive into the, some of the new features of Foundation 6, we'll just kind of cover a, a couple of uh, sort of framework myths, um, which kind of what I experienced was that they're very bloated, it's too much craft, and that can be true. I mean, if you're standing up a simple site, do you really need an entire framework? Um, you know, a lot of times 90% of the actual, um, you know, components and features in a framework are never really used. So it's a lot of extra stuff that um, is being, you know, delivered that's not actually doing anything. Um, but with Foundation 6, um, the team was able to really, one of their big concentrations was to make it as lean and mean as possible. Um, they were able to significantly reduce the um, complexity of the, the CSS and the SAS, which made for um, the weight of the actual CSS to be half of what it was with Foundation 5. And also, I mean, you kind of consider, you know, you're working on a project and you start needing other libraries for your, your carousel, your modal, and all this other stuff. Those actually can end up adding up to you know the same weight that you would have if you were to actually just use um, the you know an entire framework that, that packages up all those kind of um, tools for you. <clears throat> um, the other myth is that um, you know a lot of times people think oh well if I use a framework I'm going to have you know I'm going to have that fat, it's going to have that foundation look to it and I know I mean you do experience that when you see somebody that's using bootstrap foundation, they're not really doing much modifications to it, and right out of the box, you know, you, you're like, oh yeah, that's a bootstrap site. But 
Zerg does show on their site. There's just a, you know, a lot of the, the um, big brands out there that are actually using their framework, and you can see um, some of them are actually like the University of Texas is a Drupal site. Um, you can actually see where they've you know, been able to kind of just leverage it as more of a, a structural tool um, than actually you know, using its theming. Um, and that's also one of the, the things that with Foundation 6, the, the Zerg team was very conscious of, and they made a, a big effort to kind of um, go back to their uh, original roots of it just being a you know a responsive framework that's um, <clears throat> designed more of a, a prototyping tool, and you know just just provides the baseline structure. Um, you know it's it's simple CSS styles that allow you to modify them and brand and, and you know do your own styles on top. Of <clears throat> so a quick look at some of the new features that came out in um, Foundation 6, and one of them is their grid, which is by default a float-based grid, is now they have an option to use a Flexbox-based grid. Um, and I'm sure I've, a lot of you are probably familiar with Flexbox and use it with, you know, in your current stuff. Um, so one, one of the key features of Flexbox is obviously the, um, what I find most powerful is it's the ordering aspect. Um, so that you can you can set like here's an example where you know you, you're using the classes to uh, define the you know what at different breakpoints um, what the the sort of the regions of the page will be doing and um, so you know for some reasons a, a requirement wanted you to have that breadcrumb region fall below the content region you know in a float based grid that could be a little trickier with with um, the actual source order um, or ordering attribute. Um, that, you know, you have a class for that you can include in the, the grid classes to tell it at the different breakpoint of where you want it to actually be ordered. Um, let's see. Next up is just that huge library of UI components that um, Foundation includes um, with buttons and menus, accordions. Um, and there's even more advanced structures like an off-canvas container. Um, there's, you know, they have their own little carousel and modal pop-up. Um, and you know it's it's pretty much the same as what you've gotten in past versions. It's expanded a little bit, um, but again, they're going back to their roots here, where they're just really looking, focusing on providing um, structure, and it's not really meant to you know it's something for you to to skin on top of. <clears throat> and also, it's built on SaaS, so it's very SaaS friendly. Um, all of those components, those UI components, have an accompanying mix-in. So if you're using a SaaS workflow. Um, you know, here's an example where I've just got a basic block twig file, and um, I'm adding my own class to it. Um, and then it, within that class, I can actually just use the mixins. Like this is their simple um, uh, the callout component. It's basically just a you know a box with some predefined padding, and another you know we have the option to pass a color value to, for the background color. Um, so it's you don't you're not you know don't necessarily have to add their classes to your element, to your, your twig template, you can actually just use these mix-ins in your SAS workflow to you know, pull in that, apply that styling to your element to whatever class that you choose to use. So you could use uh, you know, the BEM and the SMAC. <clears throat> Another great feature is their um, toggler plugin. And um, this basically is, is an on-click, on-focus kind of um, plugin where you just provide the data attributes so I mean I know that's one thing that I'm, I'll when I'm you know working on a theme that you're doing it kind of over and over again is, is just adding that little um, interaction of, of clicking on something and it just adds a class to another element to cause it to you know um, open up close etc. And one great um, way to handle this with Foundation is just you you have you know your your uh, data attribute where you define the target. This is the element you're going to click on and it's targeting this uh, menu, and then when it's clicked on, it just basically would add, you define what class it would add to it, and then, you know, when you're styling, you apply the, um, uh, in that for that class, you apply the styling where you, the element would open up. Um, and there's other, other things you can do with this, too. Um, it's not necessarily just uh, a toggle. You can use it as kind of a, set, to set a permanent state on the element. So you click it once, it, 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 you know, if you wanted something to go away, um, you could set it so that you click on it and then you, you styling would you know, um, make it vanish, basically. <laughs> um, and then there's also other um, transition effects that you can add to it. Um, so it's not just a straight up, you know, uh, one action. It could actually have a fade and, and other things. Um, and for me, I mean, it just feels like a, a pretty big time saver. Um, 
Uh, the other aspect that was, uh, which ties in very nicely with the camp this weekend is that um, there was a big push to make the framework as accessible as possible. Um, so um, you'll see in the, on the foundation documentation all of the, the code samples, the snippets they provide for every component. Um, we'll, you'll see examples of, a, of the uh, ARIA um, labeling. Um, they've eliminated a lot of the past issues that they had. Well, there weren't that too many, but there were lots of some, some issues with the, some of the menu behaviors that they've cleaned up and made more accessible. Um, they include a whole library of accessibility classes. So there's like the show for screen reader that will, you know, you visually hide things. Um, there's a um, show on focus class. Um, and then they also include the what input library. <laughs> and what that does is um, it tracks the current input method. So that um, if you, you know, I'm kind of guilty of this, like the uh, turning off the outline on a focus column, <coughs> uh, that's a huge accessibility no-no. So you don't necessarily have to, to worry about any of that stuff because this library would kind of detect the um, input method and, you know, can visually hide that for, for the traditional sort of keyboard or um, mouse user. Um, but then keyboard users wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, lose that um, helpful aspect of, of navigating a site with a keyboard. Um, so I, again, like as we learned yesterday, you know, the, the, in the keynote, a lot of the feedback that we're, we're seeing with improvements in Drupal 8 and accessibility, um, I, I think it's just kind of another way that, that foundation kind of helps, you know, make a good combination with Drupal to really um, make a site that's accessible for everyone. Uh, some other um, new things with Foundation 6 is the Motion UI library, which, which is like what is used on the, the toddler component that I talked about a second ago. Um, that's also, uh, all those are available as make things. So I know, you know, like doing transitions and transforms and stuff is not something I'm doing every day all the time. And a lot of times you gotta look back up, you know, how, did that, how do I do that again? And um, so having these handy mixings is, is, you know, helpful to, to be able to just kind of, um, you know, repeat patterns and not have to um, worry about how, remembering how you did that before. Um, they also comes with a, a, a command line interface, so it's kind of like the drush for um, foundation. It helps you kind of quickly start up um, some of their templates that they provide now with um, version six. And version six also includes what Panini is their little style uh, or um, static site generator. And then they have the style Sherpa, which is a real basic um, style guide generator. Um, okay. So let's take a quick look at some ways to use foundation um, with Drupal 8. Um, again, we're gonna look at uh, sort of the simple, lean, mean version. Um, just we're gonna take this stuff, you know, download things exactly uh, straight off of the foundation website and just drop it into a real simple um, custom Drupal 8 theme. Um, and the second uh, other uh, theme we'll look at is the advanced version, which is basically gonna use, there's a Zurb template out there and it uses um, Gulp and a lot of build tools, and it also includes the Style Sherpa and the um, Panini Static Site Generator. Um, and then we'll take a quick look at the, the uh, Contrib theme that's out there for Foundation right now. <clears throat> so um, with the simple theme, uh, well, I mean, uh, how many folks are here doing Drupal 8 theming right now? Um, you know, and uh, it's, um, you know, like, like, Drupal 7 theming, I mean, there's, there's you know, definitely some differences, but uh, I like to think of this as kind of like learning to ride a bike. You know, once you kind of master the, the um, basic principles, it kind of sounds second nature, so they're just, you know, you learn that there's just kind of a few ways of, of doing things a little bit differently in, in Drupal 8, but it's pretty much the same thing as, as in Drupal 7. Um, so, with... Uh, <coughs> um, the simple option here, what we'll go through, is just kind of a step-by-step -step of how you would approach this. And if you on the foundation website, you can actually, you know, they have an interface where you can customize what components you want to actually use from their library. Um, and I've, I've stood up a, a Bitbucket, just a real basic version of this um, theme. If you want to download it and take a look, um, I'm going to walk through it here, kind of how, how I set it up. Um, but it's um, so you know, you can go to the foundation site. They have the, you can download the complete package, you can download sort of an essential, a streamlined version of the package, or you can customize what components you want to download, and that's just gonna give you a compiled CSS file and um, JS file with, with all, you know, all the requirements for those components. <clears throat> 
Um, so once you've got those downloaded, if you just you know stand up a quick, like you can look at my example, just a quick custom um, Drupal 8 theme. Um, as we, as anybody in the previous session kind of covered some of the basics of Drupal 8 theme here, some of you probably already know. Um, you just set up your libraries in your info file. And so in this case, I'm just declaring a, a global library. Um, and then in that library, I'm just, what I'm gonna do is set up my um, CSS, like in my structure of my theme, I've got a CSS directory where I've got sort of a base CSS file that might be you know, the styling that I wanna apply to override the foundation styling. And then I set up a foundation directory where I've actually got that compiled foundation CSS. <coughs> a JS directory where I've got the compiled foundation JS, and then that's where I've got the actual um, what input library that also um, you'll wanna add with your foundation to, to for those accessibility improvements. So then in my actual um, libraries YAML file, um, you know, I just got, you can see sort of the order that you have, I pull in things um, so that, you know, my CSS would actually override the, you know, file, the foundation styling, be pulled in second. And then also foundation does include jQuery, so you want to use, you can just use the, the jQuery that comes with Drupal. Um, it's compatible with foundation. Um, and then you do need to initialize um, the foundation, to declare the foundation function on the jQuery object. Um, so the way the contrib theme does this, and it's probably the best way to do it, is just actually in the HTML file. It just drops in a snippet of, of um, JS here that actually will you know initialize that foundation function. Um, you could probably also do this in the you know via the the libraries file as well. Have that pulled in last as a separate file. But this is you know the contrib thing kind of um, recommends this methods too, just to kind of guarantee it's sort of the last thing it's pulled in. <clears throat> and then you're good to go. And if you um, go into your um, Twig files, you know in your templates directory of your theme for all the different. Um, you know, elements of your, your Drupal site, you can actually just go in and start adding those those classes. You can refer to the docs on the foundation site to sort of see, you know, if you want to apply the grid. In this instance, I'm using the grid classes for this is like the page uh, twig template. Um, you know, I'm applying the, the grid classes. Uh, you know, a title bar is another, um, you know, component out of foundation. Um, you know, it's just, it's straight up CSS. If you're just dropping in these classes and you've got a, a foundation-powered theme. Um, so if you're looking for a way, there are the advanced theme um, that we'll cover, this is using the Zurb template, and it's kind of a good way to jumpstart if you're looking for um, a, a little bit more, um, uh, a deeper dive or a little more sophisticated front-end workflow um, that might include some, some prototyping tools as well as a basic style guide. Um, but this you know, does require that you're, you're familiar with SAS, um, as well as Node, and it uses Gulp as its task runner, and plus, you know, be familiar with command line um, utilities. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, I guess, a, a bit of a deeper dive than what you would get with the, the basic thing. Got to watch him jump off the cliff. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, again, I've set up a... Um, Another repo out there in Bitbucket that's just using, basically what I've done is taken that Zurb template that's out on GitHub and made some modifications to it to, to use as a basis for a Drupal 8 theme. Um, so again, it's gonna require a node to power Bower and Gold. Bower's what's gonna pull in actually all the foundation files. And this doesn't just pull in the compiled CSS and the compiled JS. It pulls in every, um, the, like a SAS partial, a whole SAS structure with a SAS partial for every component and uh, you know individual JS um, files for for every that's, that every component component might require in the foundation library, um, and then it's also going to pull in the um, static site builder Panini and the, the style guide generator style server. Um, and there's some link to the theme. Um, so if you you got to pull down, you're ready to set up, you have to do the npm install that's going to install Node Package Manager that will get all the um, node modules in there to power the gold tasks. Um, and then again, Bower's gonna bring in all the foundation libraries. Um, and then you have two commands sort of out of the box after you've um, set everything up. And the start will compile all the files and use browser sync to watch for changes. And what it's gonna actually be watching is, or, or um, you know, setting up a localhost URL for you is uh, the compiled um, uh, static site generator files. Um, so this is sort of a way for you to kind of prototype 
Um, if you're you know, working on a site, a Drupal 8 site, you're building a theme for it, this is a way for you to kind of um, do your initial prototyping, um, kind of create some um, you know, live mock-ups, so to speak, um, as well as um, getting a style guide um, and the style guide that they, they generate is, um, it just uses a markdown file. And it's, it's not like um, uh, what Brian was talking about earlier with, in his previous session with KSS. Um, you know, it's not as sophisticated as that, but it's, best, it's a good way to kind of give you a, um, um, a starter package if you're, you're interested in trying to work this kind of workflow into your Drupal 8 theming. Um, and then the build task, like out of the box with uh, the foundation package, I modified that slightly, so basically it's going to do the same thing except for the, the watch, it's not going to actually do the watch, it's just going to um, compile the um, CSS and JS without the, the source mapping, kind of like get it ready for you to, to distribute as a, a Drupal theme. Um, and here's kind of a, a basic structure of how everything works. Yeah? Just a, a, a quick question. Sure. Do you need a Bower or can you just use NPM? Are there NPM models as well? Yeah, yeah. You, Bower, the Zerb package was is using set up to use Bower to um, you know pull down all the foundation stuff, but I think you could just use NPM across the board. And if you wanted to customize it, you could just use you know NPM to, to yeah. pull down all those packages. Um, but you know this is this is what they delivered. This is what I kind of just started with. You know, um, but anyway, here's sort of kind of the diagram of what you would get set up once you um, install everything. Um, you've got the SRC directory, which is basically like, like Drupal. When you set up your theme, Drupal is just going to care about this stuff. You know, it's just going to look for that JS and the, the compiled JS and, and CSS. Um, but this is sort of your your playground, is sort of this side. So this is where in the, in the assets directory, this is where you'd have your images, um, your custom JavaScript on top of um, you know that you want to have on top of the foundation JavaScript, and then your in the SCSS directory, that's where the foundation um, SAS is going to be, um, but then you can also add your own um, partials and your own sort of, you know, structure of, of how you prefer with to, to deal with your SAS in that same directory, and that'll all get compiled um, when you run the, the gulp tasks. Um, and then there's a structure, a predefined structure for the static prototype, and this is, I mean, it's kind of similar if you think of like the templates directory of a Drupal standard Drupal theme, you kind of have this... Um, Layouts directory where you might have your sort of HTML dot twig, and then the pages where you'd have like your page dot twig. Partials would just be like consider that sort of like block files, and and you can you know so you, within your pages you can actually reference the the blocks you know the partials that you create in that partials directory, and it all gets compiled into the you know depending on what pages you create that will get compiled into the different pages. Um, and then the style guide basically is just going to have a, a markdown file, and I'll show you that in a little more detail, um, how you would leverage that to kind of create a, a kind of like a poor man style guide, I guess you could say. But it's a good, good kind of, um, you know, way to get started with that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so here's kind of a, the way that the foundation sets up its SAS. So if you wanted to customize things, like I was saying with the, you know, you don't, this is kind of the equivalent of having that interface on their site where you define what components you want to use. And basically in the app CSS that comes after installing everything, it's in the um, SCSS directory. This is where all the includes are for the different foundation components. So for instance, if I wanted to, you know, by default it will have the, um, the float-based grid turned on, but if I instead wanted to have the flex-based grid, I just basically comment out or remove, you know, what you don't want to use. Um, and then as well as with in the settings partial that comes with foundation, this is just a giant list of variables where you can set breakpoints, the default colors, font, default font sizes. Um, it's a you know a lot of different other things that just basically you can use to set up how you want to um, your want you want your foundation package to be um, set up. Uh, let's see. So some changes between the. Um, Zerb package and what uh, the thing that I put out there is doing is basically, like I said, it's the, the minifying tasks have, have been removed that were included with the package because we're going to let Drupal actually do the aggregation of those files. Um, it does, when you do the Bower install, it doesn't install jQuery, but really that's only needed for um, the, uh, let me take a look here, the prototype pages. So that will just get compiled into a separate jQuery directory that, that Drupal doesn't even know about, care about, because we're going to actually set up we set up our libraries to use the jQuery that comes from Drupal. 
Um, and then the, the disk directory where everything is, is um, you know, that's, that's used for your Drupal 8 theme. Um, by default, this was actually, you know, in the package they don't include, they actually include that in the get ignore, so it's, I, you know, set it up so that it doesn't get ignored and would actually be part of your theme when you just, you know, actually pushed it up to production. Um, if you do want to customize some of the JS, then there's a YAML file that's um, part of the whole um, gulp tasks that defines what, what JS files you want to actually include from the foundation package. So again, it's just simply as go, going in there and kind of commenting them out or removing them. If you're not going to use that component, you want to kind of minimize things a little bit more. Um, and then of course, we're editing that app.scss if you do want to um, define what components you don't want to include and include. Um, here's just a quick look at kind of the static um, site generator. Um, it's using handlebar syntax, so um, you know it's kind of a good introduction into um, if you're going to eventually move on to kind of a KSS workflow or something. This is um, how you might, you know, this is a, a page in a page template. This is sort of the syntax for including this uh, markup that's actually this would live in that partials directory. So I think of this as kind of like the menu block um, that I'm including into the page. Um, you know, it's pretty straightforward stuff. It's just, just kind of raw markup, pretty easy to handle. Um, and then as far as the style guide goes, um, you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's pretty basic. You're just going to get this kind of plain Jane. There is a, um, like a, uh, in, uh, a HTML file that kind of defines some of the um, structure of this that you could alter if you wanted to kind of customize and make it a little prettier, but out of the box. Again, it's kind of going back to the whole, um, you know, philosophy of this version of, of foundation where it's just sort of living as a, a or working as structural styling and it's meant for you to kind of um, apply your own branding and styling on top of it. Um, so, you know, the, this is an example where you'd have, you're actually just going in here and adding the markup manually um, for what that, um, you know, menu component would look like and then it will actually, and, and for, you know, provide the markup, your, your, text for your description and the actual title of the, the element or component um, and then it will just you know compile that into an actual I'll put it the what it would look like visually look like and provide the um, uh, example markup okay so you might be um, you know interested in you working with foundation um, you may not be as familiar with the late theming um, so you know the, the Advanced route might be a little, you may not be interested in really going that route, and the other, you know, just setting up a simple theme may not be as simple either, so there's, you can always just kick both of those aside and take a look at the contrib themes that are out there. Um, so we'll take a quick look at um, the Zerg Foundation theme that's out there on people.org, and it's now, as of June, was it June 3rd, I think, it's now in an Alpha 1 release, and um, there, there is some, um, you could kind of, integrate a SAS workflow with that, but it's really more along the lines of um, the, um, there, there's some options in the theme settings to sort of define uh, some of the more popular components, using some of the more popular components in your layout, um, kind of out of the box, the foundation components. Um, but uh, it's, it's kind of a, a go-between between the um, uh, sort of the advanced version and then the real simple version where you just take in all the you know, full package of the CSS and JS. Um, and it, it would serve as great as a, a base theme if you do want to, you know, create a sub theme to um, do your own stuff with foundation. And you could probably that in that case you could bring in more of a, a more sophisticated kind of SaaS workflow on top of that. Um, but it's you know, and again, it's only an alpha right now. It's using version six. The um, stable versions are still using version five and um, are, are for Drupal seven. So, but it's it's uh, moving along and. Um, you know, definitely a good option to, to use if you're interested in using foundation. Um, so that pretty much um, covers everything that I was going to talk about with foundation today. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them now. Thanks for, for sitting through this. I have one. Uh, so, I mean, I have a guess based on uh, what you went through, but I'd be interested in your perspective of uh, using like the contributed base theme versus building your own and kind of your, uh, you know, what would go into that decision for you? 
question? Um, for me, I think I would definitely go with um, sort of one of the, the advanced route, just because you know I've got to use a SaaS workflow. Um, you know, we could do a lot more with our current build tools. Um, just having each one of those components. I mean, even with like setting up your Drupal theme with like separate libraries, you could actually look at setting up separate libraries just for, so say if you wanted to use the um, uh, the orbit slider or whatever that um, foundation provides you could and you don't want that to load on every page so you could actually you know by having everything broken out into separate like the you know you could compile um, just the orbit slider into one CSS file and then have that included as a separate library so you could you know on, on just say one, you've got just a couple block instances or block templates where that's actually going to be used, then you could just call that library within that template instead of having like the entire package. So I think I would definitely prefer, you know, I'd recommend if you're um, up to speed to go with like more of a sophisticated, um, taking it down the whole, you know, package as individual SAS files. So I'd used Foundation 5 and was kind of taking on like the advanced approach. So yeah. That I could try to use the Vem classes uh -huh. and then in the mix sense. I found sometimes it was inconsistent, yeah. kind of hard yeah. to like bend it the, the right, shape. Right. And when I tried to, especially like there was an existing design I was trying to implement with foundation when things didn't quite work right, it was a little painful. Right. So I don't know, it sounds like you, you just kind of started experimenting. Anything, yeah, yeah. Any thoughts so far on if it's easier to work with, if they've cleaned up some stuff that Right. Solve some of those problems. Yeah, I mean, so far what I've seen with six, it's it's definitely. Um, I don't I don't think it, you know a lot of that stuff before was really kind of available as mix-ins. You know, I think it was. Um, it was some words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it seems like it's more. You know, they've got like a consistent okay. across the board for most things. Um, and again, it's it's for me. I just I find the value in just sort of having that. Um, you know, like I think it's it's the way they've returned to the roots of it just being like this sort of like prototyping tool, a basic, you know, um, wireframing type type thing to, to skin on top of. Um, you know, I'm I'm finding more and more that it's a, a time saver basically is what I'm seeing. And then because it's kind of lightweight to um, it, it it's kind of becoming more and more reason, you know, why wouldn't I use it? You know, so. so are you using it in like the early stages of prototyping during design explorations or are you using it for the production? It would stick with the whole thing, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you could kind of use a lot of those default elements um, mm -hmm. in a wireframing, you know, in those kind of phases, and then still use that as you start to kind of, you know, flush things out. Okay. Does Zerp have any specific philosophy around nesting components? One of the, the questions that keeps coming up in the, the Drupal component discussion mm -hmm. is a tension between Drupal's historical preference for child components knowing how to render themselves. So if you've got the whole page, the footer is responsible for knowing how to render itself. Whereas I think a lot of front end systems expect the, the parent component to tell the child okay. component exactly how to render, like right, right. the parent tells, I want specifically this type of footer, uh -huh. whereas like with Drupal render arrays, it's more like the child elements know how to render themselves and then they just appear in a footer variable. Right. Does Zerb have, a, have a, a leaning on that question of parents telling the, the child what yeah. to do or the child yeah. deciding for itself? <laughs> um, well, it's, as far as like, uh, do you mean like sort of like with the static um, site pro uh, generator, that type of setup layout, or, or just uh, mostly just like how how am I so, like as as a person trying to use Zerb and trying to like put one component inside of another okay. component, like how am I supposed to think about putting one component inside of another component? Yeah, I think they kind of have more of the approach of that. It's it's every component is sort of in, independent. You know, okay. they could um, if you place this one, you know, deep inside three others, it's still going to behave as it's, as it's sort of like native styling, you know, it's native mm -hmm. effects and stuff. It's like, it's, everything's sort of designed to kind of operate independently. Okay. Yeah, from my experience, yeah. it, it almost kind of doesn't have an opinion. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? All right. Well, thanks for coming. I hope you found this somewhat helpful and, and maybe you'll try um, try foundation out and see if it works for you. Thanks. Thanks sir.
Indian wants to know if this is going to be our standard of belief, you know? What's that? Is it Indian wants to know if this is going to be our standard of belief, you know? We're just playing. Yeah.